You've probably seen this viral video going around now of this bridge that collapsed in southwest China. And so today we're going to examine a couple of different angles of this and we're going to determine here what could have possibly brought down this multi-million dollar bridge. So this is the Hongqi Bridge in the southwest China area called the Gawai Tibetan and Qiang Autonomous Prefecture. That's a mouthful. And it's in the southwestern Sichuan province. So this is a much clearer version of the video that I just showed you. And it, this is how it was actually posted. Okay, so here is China. And the bridge is located in the southwest region here of Sichuan, right where it meets the border of Tibet, because the bridge crosses from one to the other. So if we take a look at the Highest Bridges website, they actually have a page for this bridge that shows how it was constructed. And you can see just how unbelievably tall and probably very scary to drive across this thing. I'd go nuts. So 761 feet high or 232 meters and a 722 foot span. So I don't know if that means just across these two here or if it means across the whole thing. I would have to look into that a little more. Uh, but you can see right here, here's one of the engineering drawings and it shows how it was built onto these steep hills on either side with the river running underneath like this. And I don't know if these are to scale, but these are the piles that they drive down and I don't know how far they go. Personally, I think they should have tried to go all the way down to bedrock if they could find any, because I think that would have made it a whole lot more stable and it likely would not have collapsed. And so here's some pictures of it when it was being built. And here's another one showing it. And I believe it's only one lane in each direction. But man, does that look scary. Ooh. And here's some more views of it under construction. And here's, of course, earlier in the, the construction phase. I don't know why when they post photos like this that, that somebody can't take a clearer shot. We are in the 21st century, after all. Here's a shot of the two main piers of this bridge when they were first erected. See, there's your cranes sitting on top there. And so one of the things that you can see, and this just leaves me with an uneasy feeling. Now, I realize it's under construction here and everything, but it's like, what do they do to secure these hillsides when they're done? I mean, these look really steep, and it looks like a lot of dusty, dry-type dirt here. And I also don't like the fact that the base of this is, is just kind of exposed underneath. I don't think they ever took care of that. We'll see in later pictures. And here's when one of the piers was erected. But you can see, that, you know, they've got other stuff going up. And it looks like they did try to build some type of a retaining wall here on this part of the hill. And that's what it looked like, too, when it was going up. And that's probably before they started. And then this looks like an aerial view of where they were going to build the bridge from the beginning. And this is other stuff showing the dam that's further down the river. And then I think a lot of the news media got it wrong as to where it is because, because it is located in this, and this is a tongue twister here, what a mouthful. It's in this area here called the, called the Ngawa Tibetan and Qiang Autonomous Prefecture. What this means, it's an area that China allows to sort of govern itself. But they said it was somewhere around here, like near Barkum. But that's not really the case. It's really about 10 miles away. So I don't know why they were saying that, but here's the area where it is. And even then the Google Maps satellite is off slightly because they're showing the bridge right here and there's nothing here. And at first I thought, well, maybe, you know, it's, it's an old satellite photo perhaps, but I found it a little bit up the river here. It's about almost a mile up the river. So what it is, is it's way up here a ways and I started to zoom in and I think this is where, where the bridge is because you see this large pylon here and then here's the other one. Now the optics from their camera has it a, a little bit distorted. That's why it's looking like it's off to the side a bit. Here's the crane on top of the other pillar. So here's the crane on top of the other pier. And so these are the two main piers for the bridge. And so this is probably a year or two old. I don't know when it was that they were completely building the bridge, but that's where it was supposed to be spanning over the river, con you know, connecting this part of Szechuan here to Tibet over here. And the final concrete pour on this bridge was completed in January of 2025. And what's interesting too, is you follow the river down a little bit ways to the bottom and this is I believe where that earthen dam is supposed to be I think this is supposed to be the largest earthen dam 
in the world right here. And I got to tell you, I would be real nervous about living anywhere downhill because I don't trust earthen dams to begin with. And I sure would not trust one in China. So, you know, these things are good. They work until they don't work. And when it they start to overrun and break apart, man, does that wall of water go traveling rapidly. So let's see then who the other satellites have. So, for example, here's Microsoft Bing. And they have a much more later photograph of it. It's still not completed construction yet. So this was probably, who knows, maybe last year. But here you can see they've even got more of the pillars started to be erected here. And the bridge is almost ready to connect east to west. And then if we look at it here in the Acme mapper, you can see here it's almost fully completed here it's just all the way across and fully connected and then i want you to pay attention to something here and and we'll show you in other pictures if you look at this pillar and this pillar look how far they are apart in, in the river and somewhere along the line the river is getting really close to these guys which we'll examine in in a few minutes and then here's another one here from apple's satellite data that shows when they were getting ready to be connected as well so let's analyze some more videos. So here was some that was taken before the bridge collapsed. And you can see they found cracks in it. So the police had to close the bridge. So luckily, that's why nobody was hurt. And you could see some of the, that looks like part of the, I don't know if that's the mountainside or what, but part of it's cracking. And then you can see there, the whole bottom of the pillar is exposed there, the base of it. And here you can see the land sliding down into the river. Now I want to stop this right here for a second because I want to show you something. Let me show you something. So I zoomed in and slowed it down 3x for you. Look at that large whitish colored boulder in between the two pillars. It's going to start sliding on down there. So that's going to just help carve out some more dirt and dust. But look how much dust is getting kicked up. That this is not a mudslide. This is just a good old-fashioned dry sand landslide. This just looks like a bunch of loose colloquial debris and sandstone and other kind of dirt. And so you can see it looks as if a lot of the dust started kicking up just above the bridge and, and spreading out around it. And so it just looks like there was a lot of shearing and uh, multi layers of shale or something just coming loose and sliding down the hillside there. So it doesn't appear to be a problem with the structure of the bridge itself. It looks like the bridge held up just fine until the land couldn't support it any longer. It almost looks like a volcano, doesn't it? This looks just like something a volcano would do. So right here is where you're seeing it begin to falter now because there's no more support under those pillars. So the two big ones in the middle look like they held. It's the ones on the land side that fell. And then this here is sort of a, a similar view to the other one, and this was shot by amateurs, and you can see they got some more close-up shots of the zoom-in, where you can see just how much dirt and dust was kicked up by the landslide. So remember, this is not mud, because mud would not produce all of that dust cloud that you're seeing. But look, you can see the debris there, and look at the flag standing up. And here's another shot by the construction crew that was there blocking off the bridge. And these guys are crazy for even standing there, man. Because what if it pulls on the bridge and then the bridge pulls and causes a landslide where you're standing? Then you're screwed, man. But anyway, look how much dust it's kicking up there. It's just flying all over the place, see? It's just a pure, dry landslide right down into the river there. And so they're going to show it just, here's some of the workers, they're running away. And uh, yeah, they're, they, these are the smart guys right here. These are the ones that are just, let's get out of here. I'm not hanging around. I don't want to be anywhere near it. This right over here, their head right here could rock slide right down into the river also. So here's sort of the beginning of it from a, a different angle from probably where the construction workers were standing at. There it's starting to fall right there. And there's the beginning of that collapse. But again, this does say a lot about the superstructure of this bridge because the bridge itself, the main part of it, look, it's still standing after all of this. Even after having that other part of it torn off of it, it hung in there, man. So who knows? Uh, the design of the bridge was fine, but it was the underlying land that seemed to be too unsuitable for a structure like this without properly addressing what's wrong with the geology in this area here before you make a move and there's some of the video of it under construction 
And here's a little bit of the aftermath there. So they're looking down into the river to see what's going on down below. Cracks in the side of the bridge there. And just, man, dust, dust, dust everywhere. And then as we uh, pan back around there, yeah, you can see there's a lot of water that runs down in there too. Still huge amounts of dust getting ready here to take its toll on the bridge. And th there's more video of it right there when it was being built. This looks right around the time that the, the two centerpieces came together. And this might have been done in January. And so there's the overhead view of the two-lane road going across. I'm telling you, scary bridge. And we've seen similar cases like this before. You might remember this famous collapse from 2009, also in China, where a completed apartment building under construction toppled over on its side because they were piling up mud on one side and sort of digging a little bit of dirt for a garage on the other side. And you had unlicensed people who didn't understand what they were doing and didn't do any proper geological survey or preparation of the ground. And the entire building toppled over and it killed one person. Something like six people went to jail. Okay, so what could these engineers and contractors have done here to prevent the failure and collapse of this bridge here in China? Well, I think that this collapse clearly shows us here the unbelievable importance of doing a proper geological survey of the underlying land before you build. I mean, it's required by code here. Wherever we build anywhere here in Florida, we always have to do that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, Disney World themselves ran into this because in the 1990s, they were going to build this hotel called Disney's Mediterranean Resort. And it was going to be right there in Disney World on the Seven Seas Lagoon near the Transportation Center. And they found out that the soil there was not good enough to be able to build this building on. And I don't know why they couldn't do anything to fix it, but they looked at it. They said it was too expensive. They abandoned the project. They didn't even bother building it. And in terms of the geology of where the bridge is, um, I wasn't certain whether they had piles that go down to the bedrock. So I made this slide here to show you that this is sort of what you want to do, is those hills around there are probably made up of a lot of this uh, weak kind of colluvium material, multiple layers that can separate and slide down the hill. But if they had made their piles go all the way down to bedrock, to solid bedrock, then it probably wouldn't have mattered much if some of that hill had collapsed around it and landslided down into the river because the pylons are still there attached down to the bedrock. So it just looks to me like they didn't go far enough with those piles. And so I made this other slide here to just kind of show you a little more what happens underground. So you have this land shearing in your rock and soil where you have this weathered rock on the top and the soil and sometimes just a lot of dirt and dust. And it's sitting on top of like different layers of shale or limestone that might seem hard and solid, but they really aren't. They're actually kind of brittle sideways. They'll shear and slide down the hill from each other. And that's how you end up with failures like this. Okay, so some of the things that you could do here is like revegetation on these sloped areas. You can make sure you have, you know, grass, trees, bushes, things like that, that may help a little bit on the surface part at least. They can also put down these nets that they use sometimes for mudslide control. You can also do like terraced retaining walls. So here's a good image of one here. So you could kind of get an idea on a smaller scale. You could also do soil grouting. You can also build in better drainage in the areas around there. Because who knows, did water get in and weaken that soil and everything? Or was it just the steepness of the hill that caused weight over time to make them the layers shear? So that part, we don't really know. But you know, any geological engineer should be able to dig in that area and take core samples and find out what they should do. Now, being that this is in China, it's doubtful we'll ever get an official report out of them as to what was the final actual root cause. But I think we get the idea of what it is, right? And by the way, if you haven't seen my other video here on the Champlain Towers collapse, check this one out here. And if you haven't seen this other video here on the NTSB's final report on the Ocean Gate Titan submersible implosion that just came out, make sure you see that one there too. So thanks for joining us and we'll see all of you on the next one.